Cleaning as a subcontractor, what should you charge? That's a really great question. I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now, if you have a question, go to askahousecleaner.com. Right there in the corner is a blue button. When you click on that, you can send your message to me here at the show. Somebody called in and they asked this question. We have been offered a subcontractor position for 12 hours a week, two days a week at a large car dealership to work for another company that cleans businesses. We are looking to know what we should bid based off of the square footage, which we don't know the square footage because it's almost impossible to find out. But it is nine bathrooms, two of which are bathrooms with stalls. And the rest are single bathrooms. And then there's also two break rooms that are about half the size of a regular size cafeteria where sometimes we'll be required to clean out the refrigerators for foods that have gone out of date and things like that. Also stocking the restrooms with toilet paper, paper towels, soaps, and lotions. This will be two days a week. I was just wondering what would be a good first bid on this property. Thank you. All right, as a subcontractor, this is kind of an interesting question, and I don't want to lead you in the wrong direction, but I want to give you a little bit of food for thought. As a subcontractor, that means there's already a cleaning company that has bid the job. So they've already agreed to a price. They're just sending you out on the job. So instead of you going in and trying to figure out what you're going to charge them, find out what they're already making for the job. You'll probably make about 60% of whatever it is that they're arriving at as far as a payment because they have other expenses to pay and they're doing all the marketing and they're doing all the bookkeeping and accounting and collecting the money and all of that stuff, right? So they are running the business. You are just executing the job. So you should make about 60% of whatever they are already receiving for the job. Now you said you have no idea how many square footage that is. The company that is subcontracting to you, the company that is hiring you out, they already know. And so you need to find out what that is. And for 12 hours a week, is that going to be in your purview? Are you going to be able to do that? And so you want to make sure that if you are doing the bathrooms and the break rooms and cleaning out the kitchen and all that stuff. You want to make sure that you're able to cover it all in a 12-hour window during the week. And you may have to do rotating sections of that and then like do the bathrooms a couple times a day or whatever that looks like. Now you mentioned a couple times a week and then you mentioned 12 hours. And so that sounds like two days at six hours per cleaning. And so what happens on the other days? Because car dealerships have people coming and going in the bathrooms at all times. Do they have another service that they're working with and if that's true, you need to understand, are you just part of the other companies that are already working there every day? They're going to be emptying the garbage. They're going to be restocking the supplies in the bathrooms on the days that you're not there. How does that work? Are you just a two-day crew or are you to go there a couple of hours every day? Because no car dealership that I've ever seen works off of cleaning twice a week. Okay, there are footprints that are tracked in every single day. Every single day, the showroom needs to look shiny and clean for the new guests that are coming in. Bathrooms have to be restocked every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. And so you want to make sure that the break rooms and the bathrooms and all that stuff are always clean. So what, what is the real scope of the job? And the scope of the job is what we're asking about. Now, we are a house cleaning company. We specialize in house cleaning. We don't specialize in commercial. And I will leave links in the show notes. I have three incredible resources for uh, software is number one, and it is for commercial cleaning. So it will tell you the supplies that you need and the square footage and what to charge and all of those things. The second one is a buddy of mine who's been in the business as a commercial cleaning business for over three decades. And he's a wealth of information. You fill out a quick little form and then you can jump on a call and have a conversation with their office. They will guide you through the steps. The other one is a little bit of information that's going to share with you the commercial side of the business and some of the differences from the residential side. So it's a little bit different. But if you are working with another cleaning company that is sending you out on the job, that's the company you need to have the conversation with, not the car dealership, because you're not guessing and then going to give them a price. They've already established a price with the car company. And so that's already been determined by the square footage and by how many hours a week and all of those things. So the cleaning company that's sending you out, you need to be paid at least whatever your hourly rate is. So if your hourly rate is going to be 12 hours, you need to make sure that with that hourly rate, if you have to hire someone else to come in two days a week to work that job for you and you're actually subbing it out to someone else, you need to make sure that you make some money and they make some money as well. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated 
But in order to do the fulfillment of the jobs that you have, you got to make sure that it is within your range as well if you have to hire someone else, because oftentimes we don't just work in a solo environment. We have to hire other people to work those commercial jobs with us. So then you mentioned restocking. Does it come out of your pay, the restocking supplies, or does the car dealership supply that, or does the cleaning company supply that? You need to have that clarified as well. Who is buying the paper products and the soap and all of the stuff that you're going to be restocking the dealership with? So those are the questions that I would ask. I hope that helps a little bit. If nothing else, I hope it's great food for thought. If you got questions or comments, leave those in the notes below. If you have ideas about you wanted to do commercial cleaning and is commercial cleaning right for you, I've left another video up here, which is a really great video that I want you to watch so that, again, it answers some of your questions so you don't go into this blind. Until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.